Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. I had a really good weekend. A uh, couple things I did. I went out to visit my buddy Brian. You remember Brian? He's the actual, uh, he was the gnome. <laughs> anyway, Brian hooked me up again. This guy is constantly hooking me up with great stuff. He found me a beautiful Jesus statue with the grotto that I'll be going to put into my front yard. And uh, isn't that beautiful? Look at him. But you know what's funny? This Jesus, you look at this face. He looks, uh, he looks a little Polish. He looks a little bit uh, like kind of a working class Jesus, right? Not the normal <laughs> Jeffrey Hunter Jesus that we remember. So I, I have that. I'm going to paint that. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be painted, put into the uh, into my front yard. We got that coming up. But um, what we went out there, Brian, uh, he brought me to a place called Hobby Lobby. I was never there before interesting store it's almost like a craft store but uh, on steroids it's huge and when i was in there i was walking around and i saw these from like two aisles away it caught my eye the uh these crystals have you ever seen these these type of crystals that refract light and, and almost like a prism type uh setup uh, just beautiful these were candle holders and uh i could not tell you how much they uh, I was, was just beautiful. The colors that were popping off there as I was spinning it around. That's in the store. It's not even sunlight. So, um, but the, the the small one was $16. The big one was $35. So I said, you know what? I said, they're pretty, but I don't know. I, I just really like them. I don't use candles much in my house, but I just love refractive prism glass. I think it's such a, a great art form and, and they did a nice job on that. Um, but... For today's project, I know you know something. I've been stepping over this pride, but I'm the only one on I think all of YouTube that uh, that does up pry bars, crowbars. I love them, and you know that. And then, and this one is such a perfect one. I picked this up a while ago. It's rusted. I've been stepping over it, banging over. It. I said I, I want to do it today. I just want to do it. Let's check it out. What I'm talking. Yeah. Before about. we start, I just wanted to. I had this down in the basement. I thought I'd talk about it for a minute. Have you ever seen these? You know, a few years ago, I guess about five or six years ago, there was a big explosion of these big tape measures that came onto the market, and. Um, this thing was one of them, you know, and they, a lot of them came in two packs. <laughs> I don't know if you ever seen them. Uh, they're, they're supposedly bulletproof. They're like really well made and they have a, a big tape on them, you know, like an inch and a big curve. So you could stick this thing out for like 10 feet without it bending over. And a lot of people went out and bought these, but it is so bulky, so heavy it's tremendous. Now, here is a typical one that I use. Like, you know, I, I like the lever locks, you know, so it's a little lever here. But you pull it out. It's a small, it's like a half inch tape. But for most of the work I do is smaller work. So, you know, this one's 12 foot. That's, you know, 10 feet more than I use most of the time. But this thing's 25 feet. It's huge. I wonder if anybody has one of these and if they use, if you're a contractor and stuff and you work, that they use them all the time. I understand that. But as a homeowner, have you ever seen the, look at the size, the difference in the size of this thing. <laughs> and the thing weighs a ton. Just wondering if anybody has one of these and what their thoughts are. But you could stick this thing out forever and it won't fold out, you know? Whereas uh, this one, once you get out past a certain amount of feet, you know, it's going to buckle like that. So that's why a lot of the contractors and things like that like them. Interesting tape So measure. here's the bar in question for today. And uh, you can see here, it's a, it's a, it's a pry bar. It's uh, two feet long. And it's, uh, you can see it's made in the USA. You could just barely see that out there. Made in the USA. It's got a, uh, I guess, a pry on one side and a, a crow on the other, you know, where you have the uh, nail uh, hook here, but it's a, a, a similar to a crowbar. It's a straight bar though. You know, there's no hook in it like a standard crowbar But it's very rusted and a lot of people would say like, you know, would you use a vapor rust for this and you could You know a vapor rust would say but uh, you know, you're gonna have to go down anyway because it's pitted Unlike the knife we did the other day where vapor rust took all the rust off. You don't have to worry This is pitted so a vapor rust will not take away the pits. It's got to be ground down anyway So why waste your vapor rust on this? I go right to the grinding wheel, you know, so that's what we're gonna do 
And uh, first, we're going to take this to the wire brush because we got to get inside the letters here. So we'll do okay, that. Okay, now you see why I'm the only one doing these. Here we took on um, the wire brush. Okay, so this is if you took this down and wire brushed it. This is the regular forge marks. These aren't bead on mark. This is what it looks like out of the forge. You know, it's a very rough finish. These were high carbon steel. Again, that's what you see that. That's all forge marks, you know, so these things were not made to be pretty. They're great when they're painted because all them line, you know, that hold the forge in. So, but we, uh, we're going to see what we're going to do here. We're just going to take it down. We're not going to go nuts because I want to, I, I use these a lot. And, uh, here I got to get in here with the Dremel. You see most of the wire brush just around there, but the rest of it you do with the uh, flap wheel. So uh, you start off with a heavy flap wheel, like a 36 or 40 grit. Go and just go quickly. Okay, next up, you remember on Friday, we uh, talked about our giveaway for that 25 dinar uh, Saddam Hussein banknote, uh, the currency that will be given away this uh, Wednesday. We're going to have the drawing, so if you didn't leave a comment in the Friday's video, do that now, and uh, you get in the contest. And uh, But a lot of people enjoy a little bit of show and tell, especially with that kind of error. So let me show you something else a couple of people brought up in the comments uh, about the playing cards and uh, I thought I would dig it out and give you a show and tell on that So let's go check that out right now. Okay uh, during 1990 the United States was involved with Operation Desert Shield which turned into Desert Storm uh, basically it was there to uh, liberate Kuwait and uh, to protect Saudi Arabia from uh, from Iraqi forces and uh, they came out with these uh, uh, most wanted decks they were issued to the troops uh, so that you could familiarize yourself with who was who and uh, it came with two jokers one showed you the uh, the Iraqi military rank compared to the uh, regular rank and then you also had here on, on how to their names were uh, listed on the cards and, and how to uh, how to figure them out and you could see here every card depending on the 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 card you know the ten of clubs obviously was this gentleman and you know so everybody had their own uh ranking so to speak and uh some cards you could see were uh they didn't have photos of them so they just had this silhouette put there but um these here were issued out because uh you know you had no idea who was who and everybody kind of looked you know they all had mustaches and you know, they, we don't know who's who over there. So, you know, this would help you in trying to figure out if you got somebody and they were trying to come off as somebody else. Like, you know, that, tell me that guy doesn't look like Saddam Hussein. You know, I mean, who would know? Uh, but um, Saddam Hussein was the ace of spades. And uh, that was his card here. But uh, again, these were issued. And, and these decks were all over the place. They used to have posters, too, up when you went into... Uh, any any kind of barracks they would have a poster in case you you had somebody that you didn't know and they wanted to you wanted to reference that but that's what these were and uh, a lot of times you hear about these uh most wanted iraq most wanted playing cards and that's what these are okay here we have our rough finish grind and this took about an hour and a half to get to here and now we have to flatten all this out and get rid of uh the deep scratches and some we have some remaining pitch you could see in the middle there let me see if we can focus. There we go. You see that? We got it. So here's where you look over the bar. And also remember now, as you take these surfaces down, these edges become sharp. So the last thing we're going to do is bevel out those edges so it's nice and smooth in the hand. But we're just going to look over. Now this is indeed, and you can see we have some remnants of some uh, lettering that was on here. And it's a Stanley. And uh, it said high carbon and uh, number 24. And what that was is uh, at the length is the number 24. And uh, and again, the high carbon was uh, indicative of the early Stanley uh, crowbars and pry bars. Well, 
I can't tell you how many times people ask me, how do you fill in the, the lettering with the paint? And it's the easiest thing ever, especially when you have deep, you see that's deep engraving like that. Now, first thing I did was I went, uh, after I polished and everything's done with the bar, I uh, took Comet and a toothbrush and cleaned out those letters really good. Then I hit it with the heat gun, make sure there's no moisture in it whatsoever. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take, I already shook this off camera. I'm going to take a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of, of red, regal red. We're going to dip our brush in here and get a good amount of paint onto the brush. And we're going to float it over the letters so that it dip, it goes into the letters. Okay. Just like that. Just let a nice amount into the, all the letters. Make sure it's in there nice and heavy. Okay, once it's in there nice and heavy, and you can see how the paint doesn't really stick into the metal around it too much because it's been waxed, um, polished rather. Now we're going to take, I use the blue shop towel because it doesn't have the dimples that you would find in normal uh, paper towel. Okay, do it so it's slightly damp like this. Now, I'm pressing down here, and the reason I'm on this side down here is I'm getting this flat by holding it down. And then I'm just going to lightly go over the top like that once, do it this way, fold it over, and then lightly go over again like this. And what remains is the paint in, can you see that? We have a nice paint inside, and that's all you have to do. And it's super easy, especially when the letters are like that. No excuse not to do it. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this Stanley Wrecking Ball looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Like I said, this thing, I've been tripping over it. Been wanting to do this for a long time. These vintage Stanley bars are just so sweet. This one's kind of rare because you don't see too many straight bars. You see a lot of crow bars with the crook at the end. But you don't see too many of these floating around, especially from this era. And when I tell you this steel is superior to anything that you're going to get today, it, it definitely is. And this is virgin steel before they did all the recycling. And you don't know what they put in there to try and stretch it. But we got all the facets nicely done. Uh, here we have the Made in USA over here. The tip is really nice. This bar wasn't abused at all, you could see. Uh, the back here looks good. It's it's a beautiful bar. Anybody that's ever used one, you guys know. And this one is perfectly straight. Like I said, never been abused. It's so nice when you could find something like this. And uh, I don't know what I paid for it, but I, I, I know I bought it and I was so anxious to get it done. So this one's in a can. Let me show you why the steel is so uh, good. It's about a little over two and a half pounds. Now you remember my favorite steel test. You know, here we have it hanging from a piece of string here. And you could see uh, all the facets and... Take a nice ball peen. We give it a little shot here. That is hard virgin steel. Okay, in closing, there has to be a reason I'm the only guy doing <laughs> crowbars and pry bars on YouTube. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's uh, just me. Simple, simple tool. Probably one of the most used and beloved tools we have, right? Who doesn't love the beloved, humble crowbar? Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.